Hello, I wanted to go over some of the climbing equipment I use and I have some things here that I take when I go climbing. Uh, first I have a 9.8 millimeter rope. This is dynamic rope so it stretches a little bit. It's good for uh, uh, trad climbing which is what we do here, trad climbing, top roping and rappelling. Uh, there's no sports climbing here but anyway this is, it's got an outer sheath. This is lighter than uh, the 10.5 I usually use. Um, this is uh, 11 millimeter static line so it's good for rappelling. And it's, uh, you can use it for top roping too. And you see it's, uh, it's been through a bit. You're supposed to replace them every five years. And these are holding up real well. Then I've got a uh, uh, harness. This is the one I use mostly now. And when we go climbing, we'll take a look at that. I have another harness I use that uh, varies in size so people can go with me. And then climbing shoes, which are always uncomfortable, but they're important because they have a special rubber compound that helps you stick and do some edging. So depending on what kind of climbing you're doing, these can really be helpful. And a helmet. Okay, and in our area, it's more rocks falling on you than anything else, so it's a real issue. Then I've got some uh, tubular webbing, and I use this for setting up anchors. And uh, it's, uh, this is one one inch tubular nylon webbing. There's other options. And a climbing rack, I use this as most of my stuff. And my, uh, my uh, I guess most important one is this ATC, air traffic controller. It, uh, it is used for uh, belaying and repelling. This is a new one, they wear after a while, the, the little teeth in here wear. And uh, it's light, it's fairly cheap, and you can, uh, when you set up a top rope, you can rappel down with this easily, but you can belay with it. And uh, this is a, a locking carabiner, there's different types of these, so these don't get the gate pulled out. And then I've got these uh, wedgies, so I, I use them for setting up anchors, and there's all kinds of sizes. Let me take some of these off. They have all kinds of sizes in their aluminum. You can jam them into rocks, wedges, to help make an anchor. And um, I have some, let's see. It's interesting, in our area, this is the one I seem to use the most, number 10. So uh, I have a dedicated uh, carabiner for that. And anyway, let's see. <clears throat> oh, then I have sort of these uh, rock stars. These are camming. Uh, locks and I these are expensive so I got them for two Father's Day so that works well over some years ago but uh, they work really well and you can stick this into a crack and what's nice about these as opposed to other camming devices is you have a wide range so if, when you're getting tired and you want to set an anchor quickly uh, these work well so they're really beautiful engineered. look how that pulls down and then it breaks at the hinge so you can go over a wide range of cracks and then here's a smaller one I have and just handle smaller uh, cracks. First time I used this one, I almost lost it because I put it into a crack too small and almost couldn't get it out. Uh, let's see. Then there's, uh, well, there's ascenders. I've got two ascenders. This is one I just got recently. And what this lets you do is you can run rope through here and you can use it to, to ascend with locks and it lets you climb up rope. Um, you can do the same with a Prusik knot, which uh, I do, I use it all the time when I, um, for rappelling, not, or most of the time, <laughs> I should. And the Prusik knot sort of does the same thing, but it doesn't work as well in wet rope I found, but anyway, it's a simple knot. You only need about three knots to climb, and Prusik is one that's helpful. I've got some quick draws, which I don't really use, but I use them sometimes because we don't do any sport climbing here. But um, And then some disposable rings. And then oh, here's the removal tool, which is the one I seem to go through the most. For some reason, I lose these all the time. This is for removing anchors. <laughs> so this is kind of ornate and beautiful, but it's interesting stuff. And um, what else? So I guess uh, I have time. I could, since I have this tie, this is a water knot. So I talked about the Prusik knot as being one knot that you need and a water knot is used for tying uh, this tubular webbing to make an anchor and then to might as well do figure eight knot too so uh, figure eight knot is a real simple knot uh, looks like this and you tie this through your 
your harness, not with such a short uh, bitter end, but you, and then it goes back through. And to make a loop, and I'll do that. So a loop is, some more leash here, okay. Let's see, loop is the same sort of affair. You twist it and then you dress it. Gracious me, I knew when I did that. <laughs> I had this kind of twisted when I started. Let me get that a little nicer. But it's a very easy knot. When I rock climb, I use a bowline. When I, or when I sail, I use a bowline. When I rock climb, I use a figure eight, just because it's tradition. But you can see it's very easy to see that it's tied properly. And uh, you want at least a 10 inch leash at the end. So, and then there's uh, overhand knots, a simple overhand knot for tying ropes together. But that doesn't really arise much in our area. So that's my equipment. Um, I've got some specialty stuff, but that's not terribly interesting. Hope you enjoyed it.